Britain's relationship with Israel has always been a difficult one. The country was born in bloodshed and many British soldiers died at the hands of Zionist extremists during the occupation of Palestine. We're meant to be close allies in the fight against Islamic terrorism, but there seems to be a growing feeling on the part of some leading Israelis that we are too sympathetic to them and too hostile to Israel. That's the essence of an article that's been written for the Daily Telegraph by Ron Prosser, who's been the Israeli ambassador to this country since 2007 and leaves today. I spoke to him about an hour ago and I reminded him that three years ago he'd said Britain had become a hotbed of anti-Israeli sentiment. Uh, Attitudes once considered marginal or extreme have drifted dangerously close to the mainstream. That position, he said, has deteriorated. I asked him for the evidence. What I see is that a a minority and people who really in the past were on the margins of the debate here in the United Kingdom, uh, their vile and demonization of Israel has began to creep very, very near to what I would call mainstream uh, thinking in the United Kingdom, and it's not checked. And uh, that's why uh, when I say that, I I say that with great sorrow, because uh, you know that Israel, uh, uh, we are not above uh, criticism, But uh, when you see those things that are happening on campus, uh, you really feel that uh, things have gone too far. When you say it's not checked, by whom should it be checked? You're talking about the government? That's a very valid question because uh, I think it's valid in, in democracies. Governments can't do anything about it. But what you can do on campuses is to make sure that a place where you is supposed to be a free flow of ideas and where people can express anything they want, it does not become a place where criticism uh, from others on the other side is being stifled and people who have a different idea are being uh, shut up, literally, and they feel threatened to really express their ideas. And in order to substantiate what I'm saying is that uh, there's no campus in the United Kingdom today, or very few campuses, where I can come in and have a serious open debate, which is not, you know, I'm not uh, branded as a war criminal outside, or there's heckling inside. And uh, under the so-called banner of uh, academic freedom, uh, some allow themselves to cross the lines. How significant was it, as far as you, as far as Israel was concerned, that David Cameron has decided to step down as a patron of the Jewish National Fund, which is, of course, a a very important um, charity from Israel's point of view. And previous prime ministers had held that position throughout their tenure. Look, I think that uh, I'm uh, I'm not happy from uh, decisions like that, but I can say that... uh, David Cameron and uh, prime ministers before him, uh, like Gordon Brown and uh, John Major and Tony Blair and Margaret Thatcher, uh, for years very positive towards uh, the state of Israel, and that's uh, true for David Cameron. And uh, they're very positive towards the state of Israel, maybe understand better than uh, many what the challenges are that the state of Israel has to encounter in this uh, region that doesn't uh, always consist of Benelux countries like Luxembourg or Liechtenstein. Uh, Obviously, Israel has, as you put it, challenges to face and and always has had throughout its uh, short history. But there is an extent, isn't there, to which Israel has only itself to blame if its allies become uh, increasingly unfriendly towards it because you are seen as putting effectively two fingers up to those who say you've got to accommodate the Palestinians wishes in ways that you have failed to do so far. John, is is that really a fact? If you think about it, you remember how many times uh, everyone said and repeatedly said that the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is the major conflict in the Middle East. You solve that, you solve all the problems in in the Middle East. Now, things happening in Tunisia, in Egypt, in Bahrain, you can blame Israel for a lot of things, but uh, it shows that this major idea is absolutely false. And uh, yes, we should solve the Israeli-Palestinian conflict on its own merits, but to say that by doing that you solve other issues, I think that's uh, 
Today, one can see that that's wrong. If we got out uh, something out of WikiLeaks, we found out that Arab leaders in Saudi Arabia, in Bahrain, in the Gulf, have sleepless nights, not over the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, but uh, because of Iran. And they say that uh, loudly and clearly. Now, Israel has, and I repeated that a lot of times, we're not angels, but we are sitting on the forefront of encountering phenomena that Western democracies, democracies have yet to encounter. We have uh, disengaged out of Gaza, we are receiving missiles day in and day out. And what does an Israeli citizen see? He sees that in the north, Hezbollah is getting very near to really, re, really ruling what's happening in Lebanon. Hamas is seriously taking a serious position over in the south. So elements which are terrorist elements that don't recognize Israel's right to exist are getting stronger in the region. And yes, you would argue and others that maybe that's a, exactly the reason why we should go forward in a fast forward track. But from an Israeli perspective, what many see as uh, opportunities automatically comes out to us as threats to our own existence. And we have to go forward very cautiously because we cannot in any way, shape or form allow ourselves to make a mistake because we cannot... We won't have a second chance. Ambassador, many thanks for talking to us.